20th Sunday in Ordinary Time. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. In those days, the princes said to the king, Jeremiah ought to be put to death. He is demoralizing the soldiers who are left in the city and all the people by speaking such things to them. He is not interested in the welfare of our people, but in their ruin. King Zedekiah answered, He is in your power, for the king could do nothing with them. And so they took Jeremiah and threw him into the cistern of Prince Malchiah, which was in the quarters of the guard, letting him down with ropes. There was no water in the cistern, only mud, and Jeremiah sank into the mud. Ebedmelech, a court official, went there from the palace and said to him, My lord king, these men have been at fault in all they have done to the prophet Jeremiah, casting him into the cistern. He will die of famine on the spot, for there is no more food in the city. Then the king ordered Ebedmelech the Quishite to take three men along with him and draw the prophet Jeremiah out of the cistern before he should die. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us rid ourselves of every burden and sin that clings to us, and persevere in running the race that lies before us, while keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the leader and perfecter of faith. For the sake of the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising its shame, and has taken his seat at the right of the throne of God. Consider how he endured such opposition from sinners, in order that you may not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire, 
and how I wish it were already blazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to establish peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two and two against three. A father will be divided against his son and a son against his father. A mother against her daughter and a daughter against her mother. A mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. The Twentieth Sunday in Ordinary Time. The first reading is from Jeremiah 38, 46, and 8 to 10. This is an account of some of the persecution that Jeremiah faced because he was a prophet who told Judah that they would have to suffer for their sins. He predicted the invasion by the Babylonians, and when it came, he suggested that they surrender. Well, this was seen as betrayal, and therefore the princes of the land had him beaten up, thrown in prison. And in this account we hear of, he's thrown into a cistern to die. He's only saved by the intervention of Ebed Melik, a Kushite, somebody from Africa, probably the Sudan, and therefore a foreigner who comes to the aid of this prophet to the Jewish people. The second reading is from Hebrews 12, 1 to 4. We hear that we're surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Now these witnesses are those who gave witness to their faith throughout the Old Testament period, but they're also all those people who have given witness to their faith in their everyday lives. Many of the first saints that we know came from our own family, and they might not be saints in the category of Mother Teresa of Calcutta or St. Francis, but they are often saints in their attempt to live their faith the best that they can even with all their shortcomings. But we also hear that Jesus gave us witness. We're not only seeing the witness of these martyrs, these people who have given witness to the faith by dying, but Jesus himself gave witness. And therefore, since he died on the cross, he has given us a witness of how, how she should be willing to die to ourselves in order to share our faith. We get a sense of that same idea in the Gospel, Luke 12, 49 to 53. Jesus first of all proclaims that he didn't come to this earth to bring peace, but rather division. It's not that we want to divide ourselves from others, but rather they divide themselves from us. If we try to live the truth, we will be rejected. And in fact, there's a great old saying, if you're not being persecuted in some way, maybe it's because you're not giving good enough witness to being a Christian. The households will be divided even families will fight among themselves. Now this is something that was certainly evident by the time that Luke is writing his gospel, around 75 to 80 AD. But it's something that Jesus predicted also, because we hear this in a number of different accounts in the gospels, that Jesus saw his message was going to bring violence. But again, not violence that he would cause, but rather violence that would come upon us. And like Jeremiah the prophet, we have to be willing to give witness to our faith, even at the price of dying. Now, most of us will not be arrested by the secret police and thrown in prison, but all of us will have to suffer what St. Therese of Lisieux calls the martyrdom of pinpricks, the everyday annoyances of things that happen that call us to give witness in small ways. Somebody cuts us off in traffic. Somebody wants to watch something on TV that we don't want to watch, and we agree to sit there just to accompany them. Somebody serves us something at a restaurant that isn't quite perfect, but we put up with it without complaining. The willingness to be a person of peace and compassion, and may God bless us.